My name is Walter Buford, and I was in the Army, 3 quarter Cavalry, uh, 25th Infantry Division. Well, during that time, I was drafted. Uh, the Vietnam War broke out. They didn't have enough soldiers, so they recreated the draft to hurt to get people in, so I was part of that draft. Well, I didn't realize what it was that I had. Um, I guess it was 28, 29 years later before I actually was hospitalized. Um, and it was a great number of people my age that really came to that same point in life. A lot of people died before they realized what it was that they had. So they, they became alcoholics, um, drug addicts, and they just, you know, eventually died from that particular type of life. Hardships, I would say, would be trying to adjust to what was normal when I left and what was normal when I came back was totally two different things. I wasn't the same person when I came back, but the people I left were. So it was hard for me to make that transition without any um, prior reconditioning. Eventually, they they found ways to to encourage some of Vietnam vets to to enter these these different programs that they set up at different hospitals. It wasn't well known unless you actually was at that brink and just ended up in the hospital. from yourself. You no, know, I did not have anyone around me to help me with PTSD because my wife did not understand. I did not understand. None of the veterans understood. They just knew that there, there was a problem and not knowing what to do with it. It was nineteen eighty one before it was actually considered a diagnosis of a condition which which they call post traumatic stress disorder before it was post traumatic stress syndrome. I would say ninety five percent came from the Vietnam War. The rest of it came from the life that I had to live uh, as a minority in the United States. So learning what built up to or what makes anger becomes, becomes so uh, intense Learning those skills of, of uh, how to control those helps your life. You know, and it helps you to be a little more sociable. It helps you to, to mingle and intermingle better with, uh, with people on a social basis and in that structure. It's not perfect, but it gives you some tools to work with. As I said, learning how to not get angry at the dog for the hat. Um, allow yourself a little time to think through it before you respond. Um, as a combat soldier, a lot of times you don't have that time. It's a, 
reaction. And that's, that's, that's how you have to learn how to survive uh, split second action. Uh, and that becomes your life. So in order to not let that be your initial or your, your favorite go-to uh, in normal life, you have to practice not immediately, directly, at the drop of a hat, get angry and go into survival mode. I served in a place called Coochie, uh, uh, which is about 18 miles northwest of Saigon. And that was with the 25th Infantry Division. And my unit was three quarter cavalry, which was uh, Huey helicopters out of Coochie from the helicopter. My job in Vietnam was, I was a helicopter crew chief, which was a Huey. And what we actually did was to maintain the ship at all times. We had to physically do the mechanical work that kept it flight work. But some of what we did, uh, in the theater, that is, we actually took up what they call uh, uh, the long range reconnaissance patrol, which was about five or six men that we would take out into the jungle, we would drop them off, and they did uh, preliminary uh, intelligence. They would find out uh, where. Find out the location, and get all that information, bring it back, and they disseminate it. Then we take a rifle platoon out and put it in the same place where we just extracted the. Uh, the we we call it alert, long range reconnaissance patrol, but we would go back and put the rifle platoon, which their job was to seek out the enemy and destroy the enemy. And if it was too many of them, then we'd have to go bring them back and take um, uh, what they call companies out, which was a lot more soldiers. And we would have to have a lot more helicopters to take a lot more people out. So a lot of times what would happen in that, in that situation, uh, the enemy would, you know, if you've ever heard of helicopter, you you know, you can hear for a long ways. And uh, we was always concerned about that, you know. But the other, other, other job that the uh, crew chief had, he also was a dual gunner. So you have two guns. You have a, a regular gun on your left side, and, and as you go up, you are a dual gunner with a machine gun. Sometimes when we go back to take the, the rifle platoon back, they know that we're coming. So in order to get in, we have to do what they call suppressive fire, which you lay down a blanket of fire with a machine gun. I mean, you, you just make them keep the head down until we can get in, drop them, and hopefully get back out. Uh, sometimes what we call a hot L, LZ or Landing zone. When you got someone or somebody's there to see you coming in there, shoot next. One of the things that they uh, shared with us is back during uh, the Indian Wars and stuff like that. Well, the Braves, um, when they went back to camp, they were what you might say, neutralized from what they had to do. Um, they were given honor and they were talked to and uh, let them understand that what they did 
was not a bad thing. It was for a cause. So as long as you can relate that to, you know, it's for a higher goal or a higher, I can't pull the word I'm looking for now, but, but it's, it's for a higher goal. And it's for your people that you are fighting for. So it, it kind of makes it worthwhile what you did and why you did it rather than not knowing or not being cleansed. Your soul doesn't get cleansed for what you did. Um, the Indians did it, but we as a nation don't do it. There are some things that I'd rather not talk about. But yes, there are some things that I would love to forget. I would recommend that a soldier returning to the U.S. to go to the VA find out what programs they have that would um, help them to re-enter society. Um, it is not an easy job. You don't even think about it. I mean, you, you, because you're number one, you think there's nothing wrong. I mean, you just you come back and you're glad to see your family and da 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 and life goes on. But it's not that simple. If they made that contact with the VA to find out what help they can get, their road wouldn't be as rough.